Hey guys, it's Ken here from OK Portugal and I'm here once again with Armin from Mountain Homes. Hello everyone. Now she's brought me down here, well she's brought me up here actually. We're in sort of central Portugal but a little bit more north than Castelo Branco. Yes, we are in Passos da Serra, that it's about 15 minutes from Ceia and uh, more or less 10 minutes from Gouveia. Yeah, and it's in terms of transport links, uh, the big cities like uh, Porto is just over two hours away, Lisbon is uh, around three hours or three and a half hours away, and uh, Faro down south, where there's Faro Airport, is about five and a half hours. So a nice central location. Um, the property itself is right behind me here. It's um, 8,000 square meters of land. 8,000 square meters of land. So, there yeah. is a big house, the main habitation, and mm. we also have a attached building where it's uh, there is a studio yes there. and uh, it's got lots of water we've got two wells we've got lots of different terraces here lots of fruit trees lots of vines a whole bunch of stuff so i think you're going to enjoy this tour yes. and uh well let's just get I into it so. <laughs> <laughs> now we're standing at the entrance to the property um there is a little dirt track that basically joins up to the tar road just on the side here so you've got a short bit of dirt track um the actual limits of the property or the border of the property is just over here and that stretches up in a straight line sort of up to the top there the house itself is just over here um, there's the house and the annex and the garage buildings and everything and you have all of these terraces going up the side here and uh, also on this side over here we have these fields here so it kind of stretches in this shape and goes around and you can see we've got a couple of sheep in there and this is a little enclosure for the sheep as luck would have it, it is incredibly windy today. It is uh, it's kind of strange because when I woke up this morning, there was absolutely no wind. So hopefully I'm going to be able to get the drone up in the sky so I can give you guys some sort of overhead shots. But if that's not possible, I'm going to do my best to try and show everything as logically as possible. But while we're down here at the entrance of the property, I just want to show you what's happening. So we got the two sheep. There is um, this little access here. So this is actually an access for a neighbor. There's no one who lives here, but they do have a couple of sheep. So you might have someone using this track, um, but as you can see, it hasn't been used by a car or anything like that in a long time. Um, these are actually the gates of the property itself. So this is going into the property. Um, but while we're down here, I just want to show you um, this over here. So where that sheep is, is a well. There's actually two wells in the property. You can see it there, they're, well, they're covered. It also has a little, um, well pump inside that little building over there and they use that to basically pump water all the way up to the top of the property where it can be used then to drip irrigate down through all of these terraces. Um, speaking of water this is the municipal water so this is like the mains water now the owner hasn't actually got that attached because uh, the mains water is only kind of at this level and so when you've got to get it sort of up to where the house is over there the water pressure isn't very strong so basically they're not even bothering because they've actually got their own water supply up there. But if you did want to get mains water, what you could do is you could basically get a pump that increases the pressure and then sends municipal water up to the house. But you'll see in a moment why you probably don't need that. I ah, see this is the name of the farm. So Quinta de Tapada. And uh, let me just look back in this direction and just show you the views. We're looking out over sort of Seo Gouveia area. Really nice. Nearly five years ago, when I first arrived in Portugal, we lived in a place called Manguel de Serra, which is very close to here. It's actually only a couple of minutes away. So we're quite high up in the Serra de Estrela. If I turn around here, you can actually see sort of little bits of the mountain in the background. Um, Manguel de Serra was just down here and it's a really beautiful part of the world. Right now, it's sort of, it's, the, it's like the beginning of spring, but spring is a little bit slower when you're up in the mountains because it's a little bit cooler up here. So although things are starting to come out, like on the vines here, we've got um, the leaves coming out and stuff. It is a little bit slower than in Castelo Branco, where I think things are a little bit warmer. Um, so as we walk up here, we can see we've got this little terrace area. These are the gates that, that we came up. It steps up again and goes onto this terrace, steps up again, steps up again. We've got numerous terraces up there. And if we look on the other side, we've got this nice big open space here. And that also steps up onto another terrace over here. Uh, while we're actually at this part, this is an IBC water tank that's basically fed from the well up here or a lavada, which I'll show you in a moment. Um, and basically the tank is full and then that's used for drip irrigation. And in the background here, she was growing vegetables. So the owner was growing veggies here. It looks like they're doing strawberries or something in there. 
and uh, well as you can see there's so many terraces that there's it's not necessary for her to do all of those for herself but she's keeping these now for the sheep so she's got lots of grass in here for the sheep to eat later and yeah it's going to be a lot of grass so she's got two sheep and they look quite well fed so i'm just looking back down the driveway as you can see on both sides of the driveway we have all these quite mature sort of vines and in a couple of months or actually in a couple of weeks there's going to be so much green so much growth and that's all going to go down here it's going to look really pretty uh, to the sides here we have some olive trees that go onto a little terrace and uh, they actually go just behind the garage here i think while we're down here i think i'm just going to show you i'll try and be as quick as possible because i know you guys want to see the house but uh, it's always interesting to see the land as well we've got some really nice citrus down here so big oranges we've got big lemons they look really healthy as well look at these really nice and we have some smaller clementines just in the back and these big olive trees over here the owner was saying that she only does the ones on this terrace and she gets about 45 kilos of olives um, so obviously you can make those for eating you can make those for oil so you're probably looking somewhere in the region of i don't know five liters of oil or something just off the trees on this little terrace here and there's about 10 big trees dotted all around the property so there's some space for parking cars here um, there's also more space just on this side over here and over here there's a giant garage so a big double garage at the moment it's being used as storage obviously there's lots of stuff in here it, it is an electric garage so this door actually does slide down and in the back corner over here we do have a wood burner sorry not a wood burner a bread oven so a traditional portuguese bread oven this one also has a chimney which is quite you know which is pretty good because otherwise all of the smoke comes out the door and just makes all the walls black but yeah a nice big big space and uh yeah you can fit lots of stuff in here and looking out from the garage we've got another well now these wells are quite cool because they are capped so they're all sealed off you don't have to worry about things falling in there or anything like that at the moment she does have she's got a pipe running in there i'm not sure exactly why um, but she's got all sorts of things all connected up so we've got this tank over here that basically gets rainwater off all the gutters we've got other tanks up there that collect water from a levada she's got like a whole system going on uh, this over here is a big water tank and she was saying that you can turn on a pump and open this up and you can fill up this tank and this was one of these old sort of laundry tanks that's what these ridges are for for doing clothes obviously it's not used for that anymore she does have a water lily i can see the first leaf of spring and she says she has two little fish in here as well so that's quite sweet and let me spin you around and kind of show you where we're going now so this is all nicely paved we've got a little garden here i mean we are in the beginning of spring so things are only starting to sort of come out now and you can see in the fields here all the little flowers and things we've got some more olive trees they basically take us to this hedgerow when we started the video we were down on the corner there and it kind of goes up in a straight line and up to the top there and around behind the house so we'll go there in a moment but first of all i want to show you the annex so this is basically a little studio a little studio annex and from the outside it looks very sweet wait till you see the inside so we've got nice insulated doors windows and here we go a pretty little apartment look at that got a nice pine ceiling we've got some pine floors and let me just go in and shut this door quickly this whole thing has been insulated so we've got insulated floor insulated uh, ceiling and nice insulated windows that look out over the house we've got an old fireplace just in the corner here and then we have a nice little kitchen it's pretty much got everything you need a very a very small fridge but obviously you could put bigger stuff in here if you wanted to and let me stand in this corner here and give you a, a good look at the rest of it so very nice i like the way they've done it and then from these sides here from these windows you can look back at the entrance from where we came in and the views and there's two of these nice big windows another one just in this corner over here and there's space for a big this looks like a queen size bed and then 
we've got a nice little bathroom in here. So in the bathroom, they've managed to fit the sink, the toilet, and a big sort of walk-in shower. All very nice. So that is completely self-contained. So the house has two bedrooms, but uh, you've got that as an extra space. There's also another option in the house for a third bedroom, but I'll show you that in a bit. Okay, so this area over here is, as you can see, more vines. There's lots and lots of vines on the property, and we'll go into that in a moment. But at the moment, this is a great place for the chickens. She's got some chickens, and they root around in here and uh, eat all the bugs and stuff like that. And this is the chicken house. Let me open this up. And so this is the little space where the chickens live. Let's get the camera in there so it lights up a bit more. I think she's only got two chickens from what I could see. And yeah, let's see around this corner here. So we've got more space, more vineyards. Um, this little fence line, this little wall and fence line that tucks in with the back of the house here, that is the limit of the property. And that extends all the way down in a straight line and then across and then back up again. So that's kind of the layout of the land. This is the front of the main house. So, yeah, it's quite, it's quite a big place. The whole bottom floor here is sort of like cellars and storage. This is like the main living area. And then on the top, there's an annex, I mean, sorry, an attic that is convertible. Part of it's done, and uh, you could have that as more living space. But we'll go there in a moment. So, a lot more terraces, as I was saying. I mean, look at this. We've got this big wall over here. We've got, what, one terrace, two terrace, three terrace. And that drops down four, five. Yeah, so we've got five terraces just taking us up to this point. And then we step up and we've got another six, seven, eight. So I think there's eight terraces going all the way up. We've got another water tank over here. Up in the area de Australia, there's lots and lots of water. Um, you know, much more water than Castello Branco. So... Yeah, she's got tons of it. She's capturing as much as she can through all, like all different host pipes and lavadas and all sorts of things. Uh, but yeah, let me just give you a look back at the house. I think we're going to start downstairs and in here. So this is like an old storage part of the building. The, this building is pre-1951. In fact, there's parts of the building that have got 1936 or something written on them. So I think this is quite an old building. And back in the days, this being the lowest point of the house and also the most sheltered and shaded point of the house with really thick walls, as you can see, these big, these big thick walls. Um, this was like proper insulated. So this is a structure where they would harvest potatoes. They would harvest apples, potatoes and all sorts of stuff, onions, and they would put it all over here. So it's off the floor and then they would cover it with eucalyptus leaves and that would stop the bugs from eating it and it would keep things fresh. So this isn't really in use anymore, but this is kind of what a space like this would have been used for. And I mean, it's a ginormous space. The ceiling of this has all been insulated so that the main house is proper insulated in the floor and in the roof and stuff like that. So we've got that space. And then we've got another one, almost identical. And at the moment, that's just being used to keep wood and stuff, obviously to keep the wood burners going and stuff like that. There is a central heating, and I'll show you that in a moment. Central heating with radiators going all the way through. Uh, it runs off wood, so good to have that in storage. And then we have this over here. This was like the old winery. So look at this. Now, I've been told that they did 700 liters, so they did two of these tanks. This is 350 liters. And that was a good year. You would get 700 liters of wine just off the vineyards from this farm. Um, here is the, the wine press. And you can see the old wine press here where they would basically pack the grapes into these, you know, the circular wood and then they would press it down and squash all the grapes. That would sit in here and that would start the fermentation process and then that would get tapped off and then put into probably one of these old things. This is back in the days. This is like an old concrete fermenter. Uh, nowadays we use these stainless steel ones. And then after that, it would get taken, stuck into bottles and uh, left to mature. And oh yeah, look at this. 
Hope the camera's picking it up. 1937 written on the wall. And that was when this was built. So a lot, a, like a lot of history down here. But they've also got a little tap here. And they've got little mugs to taste the wine. How cool is that? I mean, obviously this isn't in use anymore. It's in a little bit of disrepair. But, uh, you know, at some point this was in use and it could also be brought back to use again. All right. Now the main house inside is obviously it's all done up and not in disre well, disrepair. So I think, I think we should go up there now. Yeah, I'm just hoping that all of the wind and stuff stops so that I can get this drone up because a place like this definitely deserves to have the drone up so you can really see what it's all about. So you just walk around this corner and you can go up the stairs over here. There is some storage uh, just underneath here. So there's more wood that's being stored in here. And there's also storage underneath the stairs. And I believe in the old days, um, the agent Armin was telling me that this is where they would keep chickens, in the, like in the old days. So I'm not sure what it's used for now. Uh, we've got those other terraces going up. I think what we're going to do, let's go inside the main house and then uh, we'll do the back of the house afterwards. All right, let me go and knock on the door and we'll do a switch around so that I can film inside. So we go up the stairs. There's actually two entrances to the property. Uh, the one entrance takes you to a place where you can hang up your coats and everything and put your shoes. And the other entrance is more for guests. As you can see, we've got nice big insulated front doors with double glazing and everything like that. Okay, so this is the entrance to the building. You just close this door behind me. This is the hallway and I like this. Look at this beautiful old original floor. So the old wood, we've got old original cast iron radiators. These will stay hot for a long time, not like the new sort of thin metal ones. And oh, look at the ceilings, really high ceilings and all original old wood as well. So let's go through. As we Spin around to this side, we've got the living room. We've got two nice big sofas. This over here is central heating. So this is the, the wood burner that has a back boiler and heats water that runs through the radiators. And you can see it's got a nice big glass front so you can see the fire. Um, this is actually a balcony. I don't want to open this door because it's very windy today. And uh, there's a plant in the way and I don't want to cause dramas, but this is a little balcony that you can see from outside with a, a wrought iron sort of railing around it. And these are the views. So you can imagine on a non-windy day when the sky is blue and it's summertime and everything, you, like you can have these open and you can stand out and look at that beautiful view. If I spin the camera around this way, we can see the living room. We've got two very big sofas in here. They're big three seaters. And the bookcase on that side, I really like it. It's a really, a really nice looking space. I love the mixture of the old and the new. And going through this way, we can see the diner on this side, parts of the kitchen on this side. I think we'll start on this side and work our way around. Oh, look at this. This is a lovely old sort of wood burning stove, like an old original one. Brass. So something like this, you'll make a fire on the side here. This is the area where you can cook this is probably a warming drawer or something on that side. And they would probably have this for hot water. And then it's got a chimney coming out here and this whole thing will just radiate heat. So in the winter time, you can have this thing chugging along. But apparently she doesn't use that because of this one with the back boiler. It's got radiators all over the house and that's enough. So yeah, got lots of storage here. It's all open so you can see everything and you can see all the beautiful little um, uh, bowls and plates and things like that and obviously on this side here we've got a similar setup and as you go through here um, this is actually this is the other entrance so earlier on when we were standing by the front door I spoke about this entrance it's also insulated and if you turn around imagine if you come through this entrance you can sit down here you can take your shoes off you can put your coat and stuff in the in the, like in the closet kick your shoes off over there. There's even a radiator in this room. There's, there's actually radiators in all the rooms. And this will kind of be like the entrance that most people use and not guests. And then you go through. And uh, now 
I'll take you to this area, I'll take you here last, because this is kind of going out through to the back garden section. But let's carry on through with the kitchen. So, this is the center island, we've got a single sink. I like this tap, very nice for spraying and washing things. We've got the dishwasher over here. And we also have like a little breakfast bar space. So we've got these two um, stools that are just on the edge there. And then on this side, we've got the radiator on the wall, gas hob, the oven, and a space for all the pots and pans and things like that. Really nice. I like the uh, rectangular shaped windows. Let me stand back a little bit more so I can all get this in frame. It looks lovely. And the white paint and everything that's on the ceiling and on, on you know, and everything doesn't make this place look dark. This is actually a video that I'm doing with absolutely no lighting on. There, there's no lights on in this entire house. I'm just using natural lighting and it doesn't feel sort of dark or anything like that. Really nice. So we've got a space here for, what is that, six? I reckon you could get eight people around this table and we've got, What's this? A pantry area, like a pantry cupboard. It's a big space, this. It's nice and open plan. So while you're cooking and entertaining, you can have people sat there, or you can have people sitting around a table, you can have people sitting in the living room. So a nice open space. And then we move on to this area here. Now at the moment, this is being used as an office. It's also, again, got these wooden floors, which I really love. And they just lead all the way through. Um, and this is um, the space that the owner's using as an office at the moment. They've put these windows in here. So this is all like windows, just to let more light and everything through. But of course, this could be used as like another bedroom. So if you look at this, this could be another room or a bedroom or a separate dining room or something like that. You know, you could either change this glass window or put curtains or something like that up. And it would make a good bedroom. You've got the central heating in here. Look at the stonework. Really lovely old stonework. I love the way that they do it around these. Oh, let me move the camera so you can see a bit better. But how they do the, the stones around windows and doors and things like that, where you get the really big granite pieces. Very nice. And then again, these are the views from outside these windows. Uh, that, I believe, is uh, north facing. So it's kind of north facing in this direction. The sun goes down in that direction over there. And the back of the property or the back garden of the property down there is sort of, you know, the south facing part, southeast facing. So as we work our way around, we've got the main part of the house which we were just in, and this is now another part of the house. I think this is a newer addition. I'm not sure exactly how old this part of the house is. It's also made out of stone, but I don't think it's as old as the part where we just were. The floor itself is a concrete floor uh, with tiles and stuff like that and lino. Uh, this is one of the other bedrooms, or well, this is actually one of the bedrooms because the other one was the office. And we've got space in here for a queen size bed, and we've got the window on the side, and we've also got all the granite stones, and the sort of painted grouting between the stones. And we've got sort of built-in cupboards here. These, these ones don't actually have doors on, they've just used linen in front. Obviously we won't be opening those up because it's the owner's personal effects. And we've got space in here for a lamp and books and things like that. It's all quite sweet. Let me stand in this corner here and give you a, a good look at this room. And then I've shown you out those windows many a time <laughs> of that side of the house, but it's got those lovely views. And we've got a radiator in here as well. And as we turn around, we've got the bathroom over here. So this is the sort of main bathroom that serves the bedrooms. And let me just open this up. We've got sink on this side, the toilet on this side. Uh, we've got a radiator that looks like an electric radiator. And we've got the mirror over here, some big windows. I'm not gonna open these just because it's quite windy. I'm worried if I open these and there's something open on the other side, we might get a big gust going through the building. So, um, and then here's the shower, walk-in corner shower. Oh, this is nice. All right, let's walk around. And this is the, the last bedroom. Now I'm switching on the lighting here because it does feel a bit darker in this one. Um, look at these walls, they are magnificent. Jeez, 
That is really nice. Huh. Okay, so this is the last bedroom. Now, at the moment, there isn't actually a bed in here. This is a sofa bed. So this is being used as a place to watch TV and stuff like that for, you know, for the owner. But uh, you can imagine that you can put a bed in here. Perhaps the bed goes on this side and you've got that little space to put some stuff. You've got the window, the radiator. And if I walk around this side, you've got very big sort of wardrobes. So a nice space, very high ceilings and a beautiful feature wall. Wow, I really like that. Those slabs are enormous. So, I mean, this can work well for guests. You know, you've got your pull-out sofa here, the main bedroom over there. Extra guests, they can go into the annex. Nice setup. Okay. So that kind of covers those two bedrooms. There is more space. If we go up, uh, there's an attic. And we can reach that by going through here. So... These are the steps to the attic. Um, now, as I said earlier, the, um, the house is insulated. So like the roof of the house is insulated. Oh, wait, we're getting a, a gust of wind here just because I think some of the back doors are open. But yeah, as we walk up the stairs here, we can see this is, the, this is kind of the roof of the inside of the house or the ceiling, and there's big insulation in here. So it's all insulated. And you can actually feel the difference as you walk up here. But this is a very big space, a very big and tall space. I mean, this is the top of that beam. So there's plenty of space for turning this into a whole new living area, like annex attic space. So from walking up the stairs here, this is like the main sort of tall part of it. We've got this big chimney coming from the wood burner downstairs. And this apparently heats up this whole area. And then we've got these windows here that look out over those amazing views. There's a little sort of uh, handrail over here to stop you from flying out. If you do have this open, it'll stop like young kids and dogs and things like that. But yeah, re really nice. And let me just spin around and give you a look at this attic space. Another window just on this side here. If I can't fly the drone, this will actually give us some good looks from a height. Wow, I thought, well, I thought it would. Hopefully I can send the drone up. Yeah, I must say from up here, obviously the roof hasn't been insulated, but we've got all of the wooden sort of buttons and stuff ready to put insulation down and to put, uh, you know, like, like, well, like a membrane down insulation. Um, at the moment, obviously you can hear the wind and everything through the tiles, and this is gonna be colder or hotter in the winter, depending. But that shouldn't affect the rest of the house because obviously, as I said, everything's insulated here. Um, but having said that, also the roof is in very good condition. The actual um, tiles on the roof are in good condition and it's all dry up here. It's not a, it's not a leaky roof or anything like that. All right, so I'm just going to go down and uh, show you the rest. So now I'm going to take you to the back sort of garden space area. Um, actually, there's one more thing I have to show you before we get out here. Um, that's through here. So we've just walked through this kitchen and there's what used to be like um, a spare bathroom is now being used as a sort of laundry pantry area. So there is actually a sink and a toilet in here, but there's space to put the fridge and the tumble dryer and the washer. And uh, we've also got sort of cupboard space and things like that. And uh, yeah, space to store all of your stuff. As we go through here, we've got a really nice big insulated door. Look at that. It's big and heavy and insulated, double glazing. It's double glazing throughout, so it's all double glazed. And you kind of do need that up here because we are in the Cerro de Estrella, the tallest mountain in mainland uh, Portugal. So up here, it can actually get quite like cold in the winter. But that also means that it's cooler in the summer, which is pretty good because some parts of, of, of Portugal are mega hot. So we've got this little patio area just out here, some seating, and uh, we've got um, Gina and the owner of the property, Hello. and they're just having a cup of tea. <laughs> and yeah, so nice little space out here where you can obviously um, have all the cushions and stuff in the summertime, and you can sit out here and have a beer or a coffee or a tea. We've got some sun lounges over here. Um, this is all sort of spaced off or terraced off and kind of steps up again. 
Uh, from here, you can actually see where the limit of the, pro well, of the property is on the back, and we'll go up there in a moment. But uh, yeah, let, let's go through here first. We've got a nice little pagoda pergola space where they're having tea. Sorry, I'll be out of your way in a moment. <laughs> and then we have another water tank. Gina was actually saying earlier that this could be the perfect tank to turn into a little, little dipping pool. It's, you know, it's another one of the laundry ones, but it's a nice big space. And it's just out the back of the house here, which you can see a little bit better from this angle. And uh, this is like the little garden area. Obviously, as spring matures and all of the flowers and things come out, this is going to be a really lovely area to sit in the summertime. Also, we're going to have all the vines covering this whole top section here and giving it nice shade. Hello, doggy. Hello. Now oh, the dog wants to play with the stick. <laughs> okay, so um, I think the last thing to show you is going to be up in this direction here. Um, I think we're going to start by showing you views of all of the terraces that we've come up to so far and then views to the end so where this wall is over here this is like the edge of the property that goes all the way down to the front where we started so all of this land and all of these terraces belong to the property and then they go up and step up to here so We can see in this corner over here, they have an old dog kennel. Obviously the new owner, she doesn't keep her dog outside in a concrete building, but I think in, back in the days they used to do that. So um, this would have been an old dog kennel, but perhaps it could be repurposed for something else. When you've got land that's like this and it's kind of terraced and, and sloped, it's actually perfect for goats. And, may, and maybe this could be the perfect place for goats. And this is maybe something where they could go to at nighttime or something like that. But yeah, there is a lot of land. Uh, it's about one and a half acres, 8,000 square meters. And uh, a really nice house. A nice house that the owners, obviously she's put a lot of work into it and she's changed it over the years. You know, it's really good to be back up here again. This is where we first arrived when we, you know, first arrived in Portugal, as I said earlier. And, uh, you know, I'll never forget just how friendly and how sweet and welcoming all of the village people that live up in these mountain villages were to both me and Gina, you know, and they really sort of welcomed us. And speaking about that, um, in terms of neighbors and things like that, obviously from the main house here, if we go down the driveway, there is a house just over there where the owner tells me that there's a man who lives on his own and there is this sort of yellow house. Is that the yellow house? Yeah, and it's um, apparently there's a family living over there, but she says it's so quiet and it's so peaceful here. I mean, obviously today is very windy but that's not, it's not normal to, you know, to be like that. And I mean, I'm just looking here right now, there's no leaves on like a lot of the fruit trees and things like that, because spring has only just begun. But imagine when all of this is full of leaves and you've got all of the vines out, it's going to be a completely different landscape. It's going to be really pretty. It's actually a pity that I couldn't see it like that now. Oh, another thing worth mentioning, the property is on um, mains, mains electricity. You can get mains water. Um, but the water that um, the house is actually using is from the well. So that first water tank that we looked at down at the property there, that well, she uses that. It's all electrically pumped into the house and she uses that for showering and for cooking and everything. Um, she does use a water filter with it, obviously, um, but that well is, it is capped off and everything like that. So nothing can fall in there and pollute the water. And in terms of electricity, there is uh, fiber optic, so she's just got fiber optic internet. There's a fiber optic cable that links onto that pole over there and the next pole and then down onto the main sort of road. So I call it a main road, but the whole time that we've been here, there's been no cars. All nice and peaceful up here on the mountains. So yeah, it's an interesting property. Um, obviously all of the information of the property, if you want to find out anything else, speak to the agent Armin. You know, I'm, I'm not the agent, I'm just a videographer. So I make these tours. Um, you know, people commission me to come and film properties because I know that obviously we have a large audience of people that loves looking at properties like this and also want to buy properties like this. So um, I'm going to put Admin's details all in the description just below and uh, yeah, I'll give her a shout. And yeah, it's been a good one to walk around. I've really enjoyed it. Hopefully I've covered absolutely everything. And if I haven't, uh, drop a, a comment in the video below or ask the agent 
and we'll see you again for the next one. I hope you've enjoyed this. All the best. Ciao.